my first question is to the Nobel laureate, Professor Wale Shoyinka. Now, Prof, you've groomed many youths via this vision of the Child Initiative. Um, you have more than people know. I know you're self-effacing about some of the things you've done. But I'd like you to talk to us um, about this initiative more. Tell us more about what you've done and what you believe in regarding this particular initiative. I've always believed that uh, a child is innately creative because a child lacks inhibition. A child sees honestly without any kind of uh, constraints, is able to articulate very often, not in our language, but certainly in a language which, which is accessible to other children. And I find that children are extremely observant. Uh, some of them become very argumentative. I'm told that I was as a child, but that doesn't matter whether you are a silent observer or not. The important thing is to get out of that child what that child has seen and enable that child, give that child tools of expression to articulate in whatever form, either in the medium of words or images or even movement. And so, in principle, a child is at the most creative. All of us are at our most creative as a child. And because there are so many lies in adult society, you know, uh, I, I've written, as you know, a series of uh, books called The Republic of Liars, one, two, three, four, and I'm talking about Nigeria. Before a child is corrupted by the lies of adults, it's very important for us to be reminded of that purity of vision which exists in a child as a rebuke to the adult society and a reminder of how adult society corrupts the child's vision. And so when we began working on various things, and uh, she, by the way, innovated. Yeah, in fact, this is how, as you've learned, I first met her when she was interested in running art uh, competitions in association with um, um, an organization in uh, Italy. I was very impressed. I asked her, how did you come about? She was an engineer or something like that. Yes. I said, what, we, what are you doing in the, art, in the artistic world? She was very good at what she was doing. And gradually, that, uh, for some reason, administrative reasons, it. Uh, began to fold up. It, uh, uh, the usual Niger, somebody mentioned Nigerian factor. <laughs> I don't like the expression, but the, it's a truthful expression. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's there. And so when that seemed to uh, run into difficulties, it was my opportunity to say, okay, if it collapses, it doesn't matter. Let's transform it to the vision of the child. That's how. But originally, it is what she was doing on which that platform that I then wrote to say, yes, let me now utilize my own, um, shall we say, my, the, my own perspectives and turn this thing over to children. And so we were able to have the children look at adult society and really tell us what they really think of us, but artistically poetically sometimes, and as I said, in images, just to enable us to transform ourselves. One of the things I was careful to do was to emphasize to them that they don't have to be negative. I said, be truthful, because the instinct would be to say, to show that they can dismiss adult society. No, I, I, I said, just tell us exactly what you see. Positive, negative, neutral, you know, just tell us. And I think they were very, very honest. We had a very good mixture. I give them interesting titles like, uh, you know, just for them to enjoy themselves, like uh, the Sisieko yeah, at 50, Mascara or Reality. You know, remind us, what's the title again? <laughs> 
Thanks, sir. <laughs> she said, go at 50, aging gracefully oh, on a so -so pancake. pancake. You know, that was one of the light-hearted ones, but at the same time, a very serious one. But the one I enjoyed most, which was very much uh, uh, become an obsession with me, long, long before uh, Buhari dreamt of anti-corruption, I've been really obsessed with what corruption was doing with the society. And so, very early on, I gave them a thousand... Yeah, a thousand faces of corruption. That um, that exercise has been the most <laughs> instructive. And in fact, uh, the EFCC adopted it, and they were going to um, tour it uh, around the whole country. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, Magu was so busy with his uh, new structure. Uh, he had no change left to provide a vehicle to go on that tour. Anyway. Let him do his own. The children will do their own. Which is, it, only, it only goes to underline what uh, Paluka was saying, that very often you just have to ignore the government and do your own thing. And Nigerians outside are really marvelous for spunk. But somehow when they get inside here, they're just full of gas. We become they become a generation of be the first to comment. In the security of internet, they can abuse God, <laughs> Muhammad, Christ, Buddha, Zoroaster, all combined. Internet, as long as they are the first to comment, and usually on issues they are ignorant, totally ignorant about. They can talk about any subject in the world. And it's all reduced to your father is a goat. It doesn't matter whether the subject is rocket science. And so we're building a generation of illiterates, of ignoramuses, who, who, however, really relish in the arrogance of ignorance. And when you talk about education, I'm, I really feel it to the bone because I get texts from the new generation, what I call the be the first to come in generations. And I cannot believe that these, some of these are university students. I'll just end with a story and then end on a positive side to convey something. I, I want to make sure that I at least say something positive to Nigerian youth. But first, let me tell you a very brief story. As a young man, and of course you get it all the time, on internet, they even they count how many times uh, Femi Falano has spoken or criticized his government, how many times Wale Shoyinka has spoken, etc. And they actually tabulate it. They don't do anything themselves. No. They're waiting for Wale Shoyinka to come and lead a march on Astro Rock. And I've told them over and over again, I said, you want me to join you in a march on Astro Rock? You'll get me an electric wheelchair air conditioned with a mini fridge and you will then push in addition to the electric power you'll be ready to push because i know that electricity in that push car will fail before we even reach aso 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 rock i said why don't you mobilize this is about time carry placards just give one of them a phrase you'll see it all in my next uh, edition of uh, interventions but i'll let me share the let me preview the story with you and then you can read it in the book i said just get yourself together complain grumble 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 minor this ganduje this mantu this and wale hasn't spoken i said wale is doing other things you why did you come out carry a placard i said carry a placard saying fumi gate buhari gate he said, uh, Prof, they will arrest us all. <coughs> ah, so should... no, sir, let them arrest you. I said, that's well, come in. I said, Femi Falano is there. He and I will come hand in hand. We'll come and bail you out. But at least you go first. It's about time. Get off your feet. Get off your bum. And stop writing rubbish on the internet about things you don't, you don't under, understand. So then, in fairness to him, he said, well, you know, I'm still a youth service cop. 
and uh, I'm not allowed to do that. So I said, well, that's okay. I said, but wait a minute, that's your car, isn't it? He said, yes. I said, okay, you heard about stickers. Put stickers on your, on your car. And you know, we're very imitative people, incidentally. That's another characteristic of us. <laughs> Somebody does something, another one will do it. I said, before you know where you are, all the vehicles in Lagos of your generation will be festooned with real issues, demand for real issues, as you've been uh, talking about. He said, um, but Prof, um, they will arrest you. I said, I've just told you. They'll arrest you. He said, you know these police, they are useless. They'll smash my car. That was his answer to my suggestion about a form of protest in which you could engage. And I'm afraid that is a story of today's Nigerian, and especially a certain generation of Nigerians. Yes, it's true. Somebody said I did refer to us as a wasted generation, simply because we we're full of dreams, we we're full of energy, we we're ready to take any risk at the time, but the leaders wasted the enthusiasm. And somebody asked me, well, what about the next generation? What would I call them? And that person also answered the question. He said, well, I think that the name I'll give our generation is the lost generation. But a new gener a generation has come after that. Until today, I don't know exactly what to call them. And I'm supposed to be never short of words. But I've tried and tried and tried. I just do not know how to describe this present generation beyond internet trolls, the generation of internet trolls, that's all. They are fed on internet, they get their kick from it, they get their orgasm from it, and they want to be the first to comment. That is the ambition of this generation that we're talking about. It's time that we spoke frankly to one another and this is why I've interested myself very much in the young people. I try to attend every event of theirs because I believe that maybe all generations beyond the very youngest are lost. Unless, of course, they get up and decide we're going to do things for ourselves. We're going to take back this nation. Now, on the positive side, when I decided to build my sanctuary in the forest, knowing that everything was not working, I bought a second-hand diesel, bought it from a friend. Then I asked somebody to dig a borehole for me. Till today, I'm using my own water, this several decades ago, and of course, I've even gone into solar power. Now, I don't expect this generation <laughs> to be able to afford. I mean, you are jobless. I'm sure you can't even afford a small generator. How much more solar power? But you can insist that those who control the resources of this nation provide that for you. Yes, I agree. We can get together. You can plant, as I did, cashew uh, trees, yeah, I was going to, when I build a house, I want to be self-sufficient, including food, export. So my entire uh, territory is ringed with cashew. Because I said, I'll go into cashew. It was the only thing I could think of to the market. I'm not a farmer. I, I have no green fingers. Everything which I grow mm, is the birds who eat it. In any case, I'm not there all the time. I don't have very good grounds. But the important thing is this. I'm sharing a certain spirit with you. Now, when I started to build a place, I wanted it to, it to be absolutely self-sufficient. And I even planted some wild mint, which I was going to dry. And so I said, well, people like mint in their drinks. These are little things you can, well, some people came, they came to clear the weeds. They saw the mint and they, thought it was weeds, and they destroyed it. But what I want to pass on to you was at least I thought of the possibility. And if I had had the skills, I probably would have been 
a multimillionaire farmer today. So it's not that you have to be a farmer. I'm not a farmer. Obviously, I wasn't meant to be a farmer. But I, just, I thought of a possibility of being self-reliant. That's all. And I think if each and every one of you also began from there, that as far as is possible, I shall be self-reliant, which means I can also come with others into cooperatives and then demand from the government what is my due by any means necessary. That's my positive message to you today. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. much uh,